I should have plenty of ceramic available. In theory. How much crap did I have on me that I could actually make all that? Or is there some still in the workbench? I'm getting sick of walking past these corpses. Oh, fine. Okay, so this turned out to be a little bit more interesting than expected. Do I have any ceramics just chilling in here? Fifteen. Fifteen should do, right? I'll have to do with that for the moment. I'll probably... You know what? Let's be honest. Let's just save some time. Fast travel back and forth. He said about yeah. serious space, but I'm going to be honest here. I could have easily done this. Like, down at the uh, Red Rocket place. But then again, he'd go down there, and I don't want him down there. Power pylon? Okay, I don't need to attach a wire for that. Dude, could you get, could you get off the gun? <sighs> Fine. In the meantime... Let me guess, I'm missing copper. You lack the copper required to string wire. Hope is rain. Fine. Let's up soon. Like I said, just fast travel because it's far simpler, far quicker. I need copper. Is there any copper just sitting in here available? Eh, screw it. Might as well take all of it. This is one of those cases where I... You know, fast travel is a case of... It's just... Drastically improving life situations. Don't take offense to Marcy. She's working through the loss in her own way. What? What? I can't connect it to that. Okay, so uh, I've created something terrifying. Actually, this warrants a hard save. Okay, Everything Sturges. Looks good on my end. You ready to see if this thing actually works? Shouldn't we test it first? I wish we could, but we've only got the one frequency code. There's no way to test it without actually jacking into the Institute signal. And as soon as we do that, we've used our one and only chance. As soon as the Institute figures out what we did, and I gotta believe those Brainiacs won't be caught napping twice, 
That cold we've got is useless. Let's do this. Are you sure? Okay. Your part is simple. Just step onto the platform. I'll start scanning for an institute signal to lock onto. Then I fire her up and we see what happens. Oh jeez. Getting cold feet? I don't blame you. Okay. Hold real still. I don't want any corruption okay. of the molecular beam. Go to the mouse oh, and keyboard. Uh, by the way, I figured this was a golden opportunity to find out as much as we can about the institute. What they're up to. Yep. Yeah, it, this holotate's all set with a program that will scan their network and download anything it finds. Sounds fair. Uh oh. Uh yeah, we better hurry. And don't worry about that tubing wiggling around. It's uh just there for decoration. Okay. Scanning for the institute signal. Tracking RF. And got it. Hold on to your butt. Oh, jeez. I'm here. Uh, I'm here. Should I be concerned now? Validation numbers, validation numbers, error signal rerouted. Okay, things Hello. are gonna get real ridiculous real quick. I wondered if you might make it here. You're quite resourceful. I am known as Father. The Institute is under my guidance. I know why you're here. I'd like to discuss things with you face to face. Please. No use. Step into the elevator. Well, I don't really have much of a choice. I can only imagine what you've heard, what you think of us. I'd like to show you that you may have the wrong impression. So basically that he wants me to work for them. Welcome to the Institute. This is the reality of the Institute. This place, these people, the work we do. For over a hundred years, we've dedicated ourselves this to is not humanity, a vault. survival. Decades of research, countless experiments and trials, a shared vision of how science can help shape the future. It has never been easy. And our actions are often misinterpreted by those above ground. Someday, perhaps, we can show them what we've accomplished. But for now, we must remain underground. There's too much at stake here to risk it all. As you've seen, things above are... unstable. I'd like to yeah, talk to you assessment. about what we can do for everyone. But that can wait. You are here for a specific, very personal reason. You are here for your son. This is true. Busted. Sean? Huh? Yes, I'm Sean. Sean. I've been looking for you for so long. Who are you? Sean, it's it's me. I'm your mom. Father, what's going on? What's happening? Sean, are you okay? You're not hurt, are you? What's going on? Father? Father! Sean, honey? 
What do you want me to do? I don't know you. Go away. Father. Father, help me. There's someone here. Help me. Who is Father? Where is he? Father? Father, help me. She's trying to take me. Father? Father, help me. Shot. S923, recall code Cirrus. Fascinating, but disappointing. The child's responses were not at all what I anticipated. He's a prototype, you understand. We're only just now beginning to explore the effects of extreme emotional stimuli. Please try and keep an open mind. I recognize that you are emotional, and that your journey here has been fraught with challenges. Let's start anew. I am Father. Welcome to the Institute. Father. <laughs> That's your name? Your title? Father is my unofficial title. It's what I've come to mean to the people of the Institute. Just as... as you are a parent to your son. To Sean. I'll make this very simple. Where is my son? He's here. In the Institute. Closer than you think. But I need you to realize that this... situation is far more complicated than you could have imagined. You have traveled very far, and suffered a great deal to find your son. Well... Your tenacity and dedication have been rewarded. It's good to finally meet you. After all this time. It's me. I am Sean. I am... Your son. How is that even possible? I know this is a lot to take in. In the vault. You had no concept of the passage of time. You were released from your pod, and went searching for the son you'd lost. But then you learned that your son was no longer an infant, but a ten-year-old boy. You believed that ten years had passed. Is it really so hard to accept that it was not ten, but sixty years? That is the reality, and here I am, raised by the Institute. And now it's later. But the only way that could make sense is if Kellogg was kept alive and young by technology. Granted, that's not impossible, but it doesn't make sense. They stole you. Kidnapped you. It wasn't right. Right, wrong, irrelevant. It was necessary. The Institute believed humanity's future depended on it. At that time, the year 2227, the Institute had made great strides in synth production. But it was never enough. Scientific curiosity and the goal of perfection drove them ever onward. What they wanted was the perfect machine. So they followed the best example thus far. The human being walking Talking, fully articulate, capable of anything. Human synths? Really? Human-like synths. A great distinction. The Institute endeavored to create synthetic organics. The most logical starting point, of course, was human DNA. Plenty of that was available, of course. But it had all become corrupted. In this... wasteland, radiation affected everyone. Even in their attempts to shield themselves from the world above, members of the Institute had been exposed. Another source was necessary. But then the Institute found me, after discovering records from Vault 111. An infant, frozen in time, protected from the radiation-induced mutations that had crept into every other human cell in the Commonwealth. I was exactly what they needed. 
And so it was my DNA that became the basis of the synthetic organics used to create every human-like synth you see today. I am their father. Through science, we are family. The synths, me, and you. And you've... you've been down here the whole time? I have. Yes. I know you must have questions. Please. Anything I can do to help you understand. Your father... He never got to see you grow up. Yes. What happened to him was... I've gone over the records of the incident, of course. It seems what happened to him was an unfortunate bit of collateral damage. For many years, I never questioned who my parents were. I accepted my situation... ...and that was that. With old age comes regret. ...and asking what if, more often. But... ...what matters now is that you and I have a chance... ...to begin again. What else can I say... ...to ease your mind? Kellogg... ...he worked for you? Kellogg... ...he was an Institute asset long before I arrived here. It wasn't until I became Director that I learned of all the things he'd done. What kind of man he was. You knew the man was a psychopath, but you used him anyway? I don't expect you to understand or agree with the decision. The Institute took advantage of Kellogg's vicious nature. I will freely admit that. Institute technology prolonged his life and... His usefulness okay. far beyond any Machines. normal human lifespan. Yeah. He never failed the Institute. But his cruelty became more apparent with every completed objective. I won't lie. It's no coincidence your path crossed his. It seemed a fitting way to allow you... us... to have some amount of revenge. What else can I say to ease your mind? So, he learned of what had happened. He then realized that Kellogg both killed his father and realized that the revenge was coming. And so he orchestrated uh, to try to get rid of found. Kellogg. So, you're in charge of the Institute? I am the acting director, yes. I spent decades working to reach this point. It's a responsibility I take very seriously. The Institute. It's important. It really is humanity's best hope for the future. No matter what those above ground might think of us. Why you? <laughs> Director? Why you? I was the most qualified for the position. Obviously. I've lived my life within these walls. Dedicated to science like every other member of the Institute. My hard work has paid off. Ultimately, the Commonwealth has nothing to fear from us. Whatever you've seen or heard, I know I can convince you of that. Just give me time. I know there's more for us to discuss. But the Institute is on the verge of some... Important breakthroughs. Your presence would be appreciated as we approach them. I've been a part of something amazing here. I've helped to build a life for myself and the people of the Institute. And now, after all these years, you have an opportunity to help with that. Doesn't that intrigue you? Isn't that what you want? You want me to stay here in... in the Institute? Yes. That is what I propose. Is it so hard to imagine? The Institute can provide a better life than anything above ground. You've been in the Commonwealth. You've seen what it's like. I assure you that you are better it's off hell up us. there. How can you say that? How can you be so dismissive of 
All those people. Everything they've done. Because it is the simple truth. And I believe you know it too. I simply ask that you give the Institute, me, a chance. A chance to show you what I've been telling you. We really do have humanity's best interests at heart. Will you take that chance? Are you sure you want this? Yes, I am. It would benefit us both to work together. Okay, fine. Decision has been made. All right. Thank you. The Institute is now your home as much as it is mine. Please take some time, get to know it. Meet the people you'll be working with. You'll want to introduce yourself to the division heads. Dr. Fillmore in facilities. Dr. Ao in SRB. Dr. Holdren in bioscience. And finally, Dr. Lee in advanced systems. They've all been notified of your arrival, of course. Meet them. This is a different Dr. We'll Lee than Fallout, right? Right? Oh, I tried activating the microphone. My globe. Mine. This place is shiny. It's almost equivalent to like, it's very close to like mother, uh, mother, mothership Zeta, in terms of. Why do you have a broken light bulb? In terms of like how advanced it looks compared to everything else. Hmm. I'm gonna be honest, the thing I really am interested in is cybernetics. Yeah. So, kind had one letter. With? Like this one. I don't see anything else offhand. Sick? No, nope, no. Nope. Got it. Sick. Uh, 2285 Kellogg's occupational presence continues to unnerve others. At first, I thought they were merely intimidated by his confidence and arrogance, or perhaps even afraid of his general being. Kellogg is, after all, a killer. But as far but as I've continued to witness their reactions, gauge their sidelong glances, I've detected something else. Something I probably should have anticipated. Jealousy. Kellogg is living memorial to a forgotten program. He is an augmented human being, a cyborg, really. And the benefits ha he has received cannot be denied. But really, the scientists here could not care less about enhanced reflexes or greater combat efficiency. No, the cause of their envy is something more practical, more primal, his enhanced life expectancy. Just how long will Kellogg live if he passes naturally, however unlikely that may be? It's hard to say. He's already more than 100 years old, older certainly than any other human being in the Commonwealth. His complete physiology has been altered. Perhaps he'll make it to 150, maybe even 200. Let the let the pretty have their petty or let the petty have their petty jealousies. Kellogg is a living testament to the ingenuity and superiority of the Institute, and I make no small pleasure in knowing that I must irritate him to no end. Or in pl I take no s uh, yeah words. Personal notes. Wait, Director X is Sith. Sin. What? No, no, no. no. Uh, the wait continues. Ao can on can only confirm sightings outside Vault 111 and again in Diamond City sometime later. What that means, I'm not sure. What we actually mean? Was this all for nothing? No, not nothing. 
I will have learned valuable things about myself, my past, either way. I cannot afford to let emotion get in the way. I must simply observe and record. I'm told Kellogg has gone offline. Strangely, I find myself thinking of Dr. Walker. He had such high hopes for Kellogg, such faith in the implants and what they could mean. I still regret eliminating that project, but I know where it would have led us. Walker was never shy about his goals, and too many others were starting to listen. In the end, I believe I was justified. The Institute is about preserving humanity, not some bizarre amalgamation of biology and technology. So, this computer confirms what he said. He didn't like it. He didn't like Kellogg. And Kellogg has lived a long time. It is a very real possibility that he could be 60. Which means that... In the reality... The, the reality situation here is... They didn't turn Sean into some... Monster or some science project. They, you know, took DNA from him and then... Raised him like a human being. That said, that means the Institute isn't as bad of a place as they make it sound. But perhaps I just need to do a little bit more exploration. Which is highly likely. And I'll do that. I should probably not be running around with a shotgun out. They don't... I don't really see as though there's a need to be running around with a shotgun out. Almost done. Just need to tighten up this primary drive servo. That's the third primary drive breakdown this month. As far as I'm concerned, the phase out on these older models can't come soon enough. Oh, I don't know. Most of them have lasted long past their projected lifespans. If you ask me, they were built pretty well. <laughs> I can't argue with that. Even so, I'm ready to see the full Gen 3 roll out. There we go. All set. Unit, you can return to duty. Uh, Thanks again. Of course. Our technology must seem pretty advanced by your standards. We're all Doctor, looking forward to working with kidding. you. You really are here. Well, all right. I'm Allie. Allie Fillmore. You can think of me as the Institute's chief engineer. When Father told us about you, I could hardly believe it. You've been through so much, I think most people would have just given up. If you don't mind my asking, what was it that kept you going all that time? Hmm... Why do you what ask? you ask? I'm a complete stranger to you. I suppose when I heard your story, I just... Well, I felt sorry for you. You've suffered more tragedy than any one person deserves. Your whole world is gone. I'm sorry. I know that was a very personal question. Now, I'll give you a quick rundown of the facilities division, and then I'll answer any questions you might have afterward. As you might guess, we keep the Institute's mechanical and electrical systems running smoothly. Yeah, we maintain fair and upgrade all of the systems that make it possible to live and work in a place like this. There's a lot of machinery behind these walls that recycles the air and water and provides power to the laboratories and quarters. The work we do might not be as exciting as some of the other departments, but it's at least as important. So I'd say more so. Without you, they all power, die. Does that mean you're on board? <sighs> With what? On board with what? The Institute, of course. Just Sean implied in general. you operated on a level, if not equal, and at least similar to the rest of us. Curious. If there's anything else you'd like to know about the facilities division, I'm happy to discuss it. Hmm. Who, Who built, built it? this place originally? Has it been here long? The construction of the Institute is the work of generations of scientists. The original survivors of the war, our progenitors, took refuge in the basement of the old Commonwealth Institute of Technology. Over time, their sons and daughters dug deeper into the earth and built increasingly sophisticated habitats and laboratories. It's a process that's still going on today. Even now, we're digging out tunnels for new facilities and infrastructure. Just think what this place will look like a hundred years from now. I hope I'm there to see it. Hmm. Is that all pure water? For science. Oh. Is that AstroTurf? Really? AstroTurf? That? Uh, AstroTurf. Really? 
The Institute is my life. No visible reaction I to the K-14 compound. Too. We'll start the next trial, then. The dosage will be much larger this time, and the side effects will likely be more pronounced. Will there be any pain? I honestly don't know. I suppose it's your job to find out. Now hold still. <laughs>